Math 265A, Quest to College. I'm Joe Vasta, and this lecture is Bug 7. Okay, so what we're going to do is we are going to go back and investigate the bugs, but now we know shortcuts for finding the velocity function. So, Suppose a bug is moving on a number line. At time t seconds, his position is s, feet from the origin, let f of t equal s. So you've got this whole situation where a little bug is moving to the right, moving to the left, and he's doing stuff like that. And that's all he's doing. And this is actually going to help us um, analyze problems from physics, and a whole bunch of other things. So let's go ahead and do some problems. A lot of these um, will look very familiar to you. So like when we do total distance traveled, average velocity, except now we don't have to do DQ, okay? Because DQ is built into the shortcuts. There is the position function. Compute. The velocity function. So that's what I'm going to do. The velocity function is the derivative f prime. But because it's the velocity function, I'm going to call it v. v of t is, I'm going to take the derivative, 2t minus 8 plus 0. I'm not going to put the plus 0. So there's the velocity function, um, 2t minus 8. And that describes the velocity, the instantaneous velocity of the bug at any given time. Where is the bug at 3 seconds? Okay, so 3 seconds happens to be the time, t. And we want to know where, so this right here is the position function it's going to tell us. So I'm going to say f of 3. I'm going to plug it into that function. So I have 3 squared minus 8 times 3 plus 19. Should get a calculator out, but I'll do this without a calculator. 9 minus 24 plus 19. 19 plus 9 is 28. 28 minus 24 is 4. Now be careful you don't just box 4 for your answer. It says where is the bug at 3 seconds? The bug is 4 feet. Now what does that mean? four feet on the number line. So I'll go ahead and draw a number line. I'll put the number line right here. Zero, one, two, three, four. So the bug is right there. Four feet on the number line. So that answers that question. What is the bug's, the bug's velocity at 3 seconds? So once again, let's take note that they're giving us t. And you could also, I'm not saying you should do this, but this right here is an s. Okay, s stands for a position on the number line. Where's the bug's velocity at 3? When they say bug's velocity, um, they mean instantaneous velocity, and we don't have to say that anymore. And we have a velocity function. So we're going to go v of 3. Okay, v of 3, we plug 3 into this function, we have 2 times 3 minus 8. So I have 6 minus 8. 
which gives me negative 2. Okay, we want to make sure that we don't just write negative 2 as our answer. We have to put the units. This is negative 2 feet per second. Now, what does that really mean? It means that this bug is traveling backwards, traveling that way to the left, and his velocity is negative two feet per second. Okay. Now, I'm going to do something that you really don't need to do when you're doing your bug homework, but this is just to tie this together with the graph. It's going to help us later on. The time in both of these, oh, wait, let's just go ahead and make an arrow pointing to this, this right here negative 2 is V. Okay, so we have T, which is time, S, which is position on the number line, and V, which is the velocity. Now, this right here, the position function is a parabola. And yes, the velocity function is a line, but we're not going to graph this because I don't want to make it too confusing. I'm just going to graph this and I'm going to show the relationship of the um on the graph of the numbers that we just got. So here it is. There's the graph. Here's time equals 3. And I go ahead and put a dot on the graph. So this is time, the t-axis. And this dot, this point is 3 comma 4. 4 being on the s-axis, which tells you the position of the bug on the number line. Now, we got velocity of the bug at 3 seconds was negative 2. Well, look what I have drawn that's touching this point. It is the tangent line. Here's the tangent line right here. And look at the slope of the tangent line. Look, 1, 2 up and one to the left, that's negative two. So the slope of that tangent line tells you the velocity at that point. So once again, I'm throwing this in here, um, not because you have to do this graph, you just have to answer the questions, but the graph is a good thing to know. It's good to know these connections. So we're gonna get back to our problems. We're done with one, two, and three, so let's do some other ones now. Okay, we have our position function. This is the, this is the same one, t squared, minus eight t plus 19. And then this is the velocity function that we computed in problem number one. And we'll just put it up here because we already know what it is. So now, problem number four says, when is the bug at velocity 6 feet per second. Okay, something that might help you on this, let's see if we can do this, is this f of t can be replaced with an s, if you like. And this v of t can be replaced with just a v. So that might help some of you out. What are they giving us right here? This guy right here? Now the other one I believe I circled a number in and I said, oh, well that is um, T, but this isn't T. What is this? This is a velocity. And then they say, when is the bug at that velocity? When happens to be a time. So we're going to go to the equation that has v's and t's in it, the velocity equation. And so here's the velocity equation right here. Let me just write it. v equals 2t minus 8. Okay, so now I know what v is and I'm trying to find out t. So look at this. V is 6. T is, we don't know. So we're just going to write it like that. Okay, I'm going to add 8 to both sides. 14 equals 2t. Divide by 2. 
7 equals t. So when they ask, when is the bug at velocity 6 feet per second, that would be at 7, and you've got to put the units. Well, when is a time 7 seconds? Okay, the next one. You might want to pause the video and see if you can do problem number five. Okay, problem number five says, where is the bug at velocity six feet per second? So look at this. This right here is the same as the last problem. This is the velocity. And they say, where? Now that's not a time, that is a position. Okay, so we're going to look at the position function. The position function says, I mean, I'll write it up like I did the other one. S equals, we'll put a line right here, t squared minus, um, I'm going to turn that into an 8, an 8t plus 19. So, notice this. This one doesn't have v in it. But we know at six feet per second from the last problem, the bug, um, the bug was doing that velocity at seven seconds. So we know from the last problem that t is seven. So all we have to do is plug seven into this equation and that will give us what s is. Now, another, a simpler way to do this maybe is to go, well, f of seven which is exactly what I'm doing here, but let's just go ahead and continue this. Okay, so now I have some arithmetic to do. 49 minus 56, we have plus 19. 49 plus 19, well, what is that? That is 50, 60, 8 minus 56, which gives me 12. So our final answer is going to be not just 12, but it says where? Um, 12 feet. So that's the deal. So basically we can bring the bug back into discussion here. Say, so look, here's 9, 10, 11, 12. The bug is right here at 12 feet on the number line, going 6 feet per second. So he's traveling to the right and this is at seven seconds. This is what's happening to the bug. So that's the deal. So make sure you know how to do those problems. I'm gonna go ahead and um, look at how this connects with the graph. Basically, we have time seven seconds. Position is 12. Velocity is six feet per second. So time, seven seconds, you have a point up here. This point on the graph is seven comma 12. 12 is the Y value, or we should say the S value, which is the position on the number line, which we found. And look, I have a line, it's kind of hard to see up there, but it's a line that's drawn tangent to that point. That line should have a slope of the velocity which was six. So let's just check the slope of this. Let's put a point right here. We go up six, one, two, three, four, five, six, and over one, look. One, two, three, four, five, six, over one. Yeah, so this thing has slope six. So that's just a little bit of a connection with this problem here. Okay, next question. Problem six and seven sort of are paired up. You might want to pause the video 
and see if you can do problems six and seven. Okay, six. When? That means you're looking for a time. When is the bug at rest? Well, rest tells us something. Okay, he's not just sitting there going, ha, ah, and taking a nap on the number line. Rest means something about the velocity. But the velocity, you're not going to the left, you're not going to the right. The velocity is zero feet per second. So you can see that problems six and seven are kind of like problems four and five. Okay, so um, we have T, what we're looking for, and V is zero. So let's go ahead and write up this equation again here. So we have V equals 2T minus 8. So basically what you're doing with the velocity function is you are setting it equal to zero when you do a problem like this. Or if you have it like this and it's not written, you know, like with function notation, you're setting V equal to zero. And so we end up getting something like this. 0 equals 2t minus 8. Add 8 to both sides. So we have 8 equals 2t. Divide both sides by 2. 4 equals the time. So the answer to this problem, when is the bug at rest? Or when is the bug have velocity 0 feet per second? Well, it would be at time four units would be seconds. Where is the bug at rest? Okay, so once again, rest is the same thing. V equals zero, and we also know that T is four. Where is the position? So we're going to take out this position function, which is s equals it's the one up here, t squared minus 8t plus 19. So we don't have a v in there, but we have a t. So we can plug t equals 4 in for t. Now, if you like, another way of doing this is would to be like if you knew all this you could just say what is f of 4 and then that would um, crank out the position so it's the same thing so s is 4 squared minus 8 times 4 plus 19 okay so what we have is we have s equals 16, I'm running out of space here, minus 32 plus 19. Well, 16 plus 19 looks like it's 35. 35 minus 32 is 3. So the answer to this position is 3. We're going to say 3 feet. So where is the bug at rest? Three feet. Do we have a picture of our position function that illustrates this? Yeah. This picture is optional when you are doing your homework. So we have time four, which is right here. Position three feet. So this is the point. 4 comma 3 and look at the tangent line. It goes like that and it looks like the slope on that tangent line. Slope is 0. It has slope 0 but what does that tell you about this graph of the position function? It's the part of the graph that is the bottom of the valley or a minimum. And so that's significant. Um, when the derivative is equal to zero, it corresponds to a minimum in this problem. So this is all going to be helpful as we keep going on in calculus.
Okay. Let's go ahead and do some more problems here. Problem number eight. When is the bug traveling in the positive direction? So notice what I have up here. I have the position function, the velocity function, and what we found um, last time, the bug is resting at, that means his velocity is zero, four seconds, and then it's at three feet. So when is the bug traveling in the positive direction? This when means we're trying to find time traveling in the positive direction. So remember you had the number line, the bugs on the number line, and basically we're saying when is the bug traveling to the right? Or traveling in the positive direction says when is the velocity positive? Do we have a way in math of saying that? Yes. So let's replace this. Remember the V of T, I'm not going to use the fancy colors like I did last time. This is just V. You can replace it with 2T minus 8. This is greater than 0. And then we solve this inequality, which might remind you of when we solved this equation here. So it was an equation there. So I believe the rest time is going to be involved here. So we have 2t is greater than 8. t is greater than 4. So <clears throat> what does this mean? This means the bug is traveling in the, in the positive direction for t greater than 4 seconds. So after 4 seconds he's traveling in a positive direction. You might want to do this one on your own by pausing the video. When, which is t, is the bug traveling in the negative direction? Well, that would be when the velocity negative direction is going like this. And that's when the velocity is negative. The mathy way of saying that is V is less than zero. You're pretty much doing the same algebra on both sides, but we'll write it all out for you. 2t minus 8 less than zero. Add 8 to both sides. 2t less than 8. Divide both sides by 2. t less than 4. And maybe it's not a big surprise because of the other answer. So before 4 seconds, when t is less than 4 seconds, the bug is traveling in the negative direction. And we'll take a look at the graph after we do problem number 10. So draw a diagram to represent the motion of the bug. So that's what we're going to do. So here's the number line. This is the number line the bug is traveling on. Okay, so we'll put the bug there. And we had some important things. We knew that the bug was at rest. So this is important when you're drawing a diagram to represent the motion of the bug and you don't have the graph. Now I know I've been showing you the graph, but that was just an extra thing. So when you don't have the graph, the important thing to know is the rest time. And we found the rest time. So the rest time, four seconds at three feet. So I'm gonna go ahead and put three feet on the number line and he's resting at four seconds. Okay, so I'll put a dot right up there. 
So let's think about what's happening. Let's look at this. This is really going to help us. But let's start here, not there. So before four seconds, the bug is traveling in the negative direction. And at four seconds, right at four seconds, so maybe this is at like two, three, and then at four seconds, the bug is resting, meaning he's not going in the negative direction anymore. And then he's traveling in the positive direction after four seconds. So then that's kind of where he turns around. And now he's going like this. Now, of course, he's on the number line, but I can't control him. I mean, he has a mind of his own, but he should be on the number line. So it looks like this part right here is the turnaround part. So the rest time can be the turnaround part. It doesn't necessarily always work out that way, but anytime you have a turnaround part, it will be the rest time. So it's best to investigate the rest times and investigate the directions. So watch this. So it looks like that right here. We go like this. And with these bug diagrams, you should always label the time on the turnaround part. And the time is four seconds. Okay. Now I'm going to label some other times that we had. And I'll label them in different colors. I believe, um, what was it, problem number one, no, problem two and three said that at three seconds he's at four. So at three seconds, so you don't need to label this on your diagram. Here's four and three seconds. I shouldn't put it up there, I should put it down here because that's before four seconds. So this is three seconds. And that's a little confusing because at three seconds he's at four and at four seconds he's at three, but it is the way this problem is. <clears throat> and then on problems number four and five, at seven seconds he was at 12. So let's just put 12 over here. And seven seconds, which means he's probably up here for sure. This is seven seconds and it describes what we were looking for. So it's kind of funny, the rest time, you know, when you have the rest time and the velocity is zero, that's the derivative being zero, and that's where the tangent line is horizontal, which we saw in this picture. So that's where the tangent line is horizontal, when the derivative is zero. Um, let's just take a look at the picture and see if we have everything drawn correctly. I believe we do. Look at this. Here's the picture. I'm going to bend this here so we can see this thing happening. Or maybe I should have put it, no, I don't need to bend the paper. I'll put it right up here so we can see it all. And so look what we have. Um, we have this diagram with the bug. So remember, this is the number line right here. So the bug is walking along the number line and he's coming down, which means he's going to the left. And at three on the number line, happens to be at four seconds, he turns around, starts going back up the number line, or going back up. And so this parabola describes it. And right here, this was our rest time. This is where the tangent line is horizontal. The bug is traveling in the positive direction after four seconds. So any point on this graph after four seconds has um, a positive slope, which means the graph is increasing. It's going up. And the bug is traveling in the negative direction, everything up to four seconds, which means the slopes are negative, which means the graph is decreasing or going down. So like when your position graph is going down, that means the bug is going to the left, and when it's going up, it means the bug is going to the right. Now, when you're doing your homework, you're not gonna be given the graph. You're gonna see if you can get this 
thing from just f of t. And I believe you can. Okay, so you want to do your homework on this. We're not done with this problem. We're going to do a few more things here. Okay, so here is the position function, the velocity function, the bug is at rest at four seconds, time four seconds, position three feet. Here are some familiar problems that you can do. So pause the video and see if you can find bug's displacement and bug's average velocity over this time interval. Okay, bug's displacement. So if you remember the bug's displacement, it happens to be f of n time minus f of beginning time. So that's what we're going to do. So f of 6, let's just put it in these big parentheses. So this is going to be 36 minus 48 plus 19. That's f of 6. We've done these problems before, but I think this is so important that we should know how to do this. I mean, this is, this is kind of what we've been building our calculus on, was these bug handouts. This is bug 7, so this is already the seventh one. And some of you are getting sick of this and maybe wish you had taken another instructor who did not obsess over bugs on a number line. But oh well, it's too late to um, change into another class. Okay, f of 1, so this is going to be 1 minus 8 plus 19. Okay, 36 plus 19 is 55, 55 minus 48, 7. And I have the minus sign, 20 minus 8 is 12. 7 minus 12 is negative 5. And you should put your units, the bug's displacement is feet. So if you took a snapshot of the bug, at time 1 he's somewhere on the number line, and at time 6 he's actually five feet to the left. And that's why displacement is a negative. I know some of you are like, well, you can't have negative distance. Well, this is not just labeled as distance. It's a displacement, which is a distance plus, is it to the left or to the right of the start position? Okay, so th this is how we do our displacement. And um, I'm gonna go ahead and take a look at the graph and then we'll come back to this. So we have 1 and 6. So here's, I put a point on the graph at 1. I put a point on the graph at 6. So at time 1, the bug is at the 12 feet mark on the number line. And then at time 6, the bug is at the 7 foot mark. And notice we have a 7 and a 12 there, so that's kind of cool. And so the displacement, so think of this as the number line where this is negative and that's positive. It's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So when you take a snapshot at 6 seconds, he has been displaced from here to here. And that's your um, We've counted 5, or 5 in the negative direction, so negative 5. Let's go ahead and look at problem number 12, which asks, what is the bug's average velocity over the time interval 1 to 6? The average velocity is the displacement, and I'm going to write it like this, 
over the time. So you know what, a lot of you would have just said displacement, which you already knew, and over the time, which you could have easily got. Okay? But the reason I do this is to remind you that it's the bug's average velocities, which we used, and we made the times closer and closer, to grab on to the instantaneous velocity, but more than that, to grab on to this whole concept called the derivative, in which is most of our study in, in this semester of calculus. Okay, so the, the derivative would be, you know, you're studying average velocities and you're taking limits, and somehow the dq got thrown in there because we did a substitution. But anyway, let's not do the derivative. We already did that in this problem. Look, we, we did that on problem number one. So f of 6 minus f of 1, we got negative 5 for that. That was feet. 6 minus 1 is 5 feet. So the bug's average velocity is negative 1. We got a, um, oh, what did I put feet on the bottom? I don't know, guys. So it's actually huh, seconds. Once again, I'm not going to go back and edit that out of the video, otherwise I can never be able to produce these videos in real time here to get it done before your day comes where you have to watch it. So this is negative one foot per second. So that's not instantaneous, that is the average velocity in this time interval. So like at time two, the bug is probably not going negative one foot per second, but you kind of averaged all the um, velocities together and it, it comes up to negative one foot per second. In fact, at, at time two, which is in that interval, the bug is going um, two times two, so it would negative four feet per second. So uh, it's different in at time five, the instantaneous velocity is two feet per second. But if you average them all up, and this is when we start doing later on in this class, anti-derivatives, um, you kind of summed up infinitely many things. The average velocity is negative one foot per second. Okay. Hopefully that didn't like blow your mind there. So what do we have? Um, how is this related to the picture? Well, time one, time six, we have time one, time six, and we draw something. It's not a tangent line, it's a secant line. It connects two points on the function. And we draw that secant line and we say, well, what is the slope of that secant line? Look, it's one up and one to the left, which is negative one. Negative one was the average velocity. Okay, let's go ahead and finish up bug number seven, the one kind of question that we didn't do, is the total distance traveled. What is the bug's total distance traveled over the time interval one to six? Now when we have a picture we can just count with our finger. And once again, I'm, I threw the picture at you saying this is a little extra, we're just looking at the picture. So suppose we didn't have the picture. How could we find the bug's total distance traveled just given a function and maybe its velocity because we could take the derivative? Well, what you have to do is compute the rest time. And the rest time tells us everything. That's when the velocity is zero. So what we're going to do for total distance traveled from 1 to 6 is we do understand that sometimes the bug is going to the right and sometimes it's going to the left. And sort of the displacement sort of loses the total distance traveled. But when we're doing total distance traveled, what we can do, this is our time interval, we can ask ourselves, does the rest time, does the bug ever have zero velocity in this time interval? And the answer is yes. Look, four is in that interval. 
So to do the total distance traveled, what you want to do is find the displacement from the beginning time to the rest time and add that to the displacement from the, so we're breaking this time interval up into two time intervals from the rest time to the end time. Now what I wrote down here is incorrect. You're like, yeah, what are you doing? You're the math teacher. I'm writing incorrect math here. Um, but I want to, maybe you can pause the video and, and ask yourself, why is this not good? Okay, the reason this is not good is sometimes the displacement is to the left, which would be a negative number. And sometimes it's to the right, which would be a positive number. And so that might just give you the displacement. That's, that's not going to give you the total distance traveled. How you'll get the total distance traveled is taking the absolute value of those. Now, we didn't do this before because we couldn't get the velocity function really quickly with shortcuts and we weren't asking the rest times okay we were we, we had to take baby steps but now we can do this so total distance traveled let's go ahead and do this displacement is f of 4 minus f of 1 f of n time minus f of beginning time and over here is f of 6 minus f of 4. Okay, so it might be worthwhile when you're doing problems in your homework is to maybe up top go f of 1, and I believe we did some of these. Um, did we? See, this is me being lazy. I don't really want to do this again. f of 1 is 12. We found out what f of 6 was. I believe that's the one that was 7. And f of 4, you know, 16 minus 32 plus 19. That seems so familiar. And we did it. Um, that, I think, was 3. Okay, I'm running out of space here, so this was bad planning on my part. I have space here, so I'm not, I'm not too worried. F of 4, which is 3, minus 12. I'm more concerned that I'm not making mistakes. Okay. So we have 3 minus 12 there. And then we have plus absolute value. F of 6, this is 7, minus f of 4 minus 3. This is the absolute value of negative 9 plus the absolute value of 4. So we now have 9 plus 4 which gives us 13. Woo! Just fit it. So the total distance traveled in this time interval 1 to 6 is 13 feet total distance traveled will never be negative and you can see why. Now, I mean, we weren't supposed to have this graph, but I'm going to show you the graph so we can show you total distance traveled. Here it is. And you're going from here. You're going to end up here. But we're using this graph and um, so we're, we travel all the way down to 3. So look, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. See, there's the 9. We have that in our calculation. And then you're going to travel back up to 7. So a 9, and then we have 1, 2, 3, 4. There's the 4 that we had from the other absolute value. So 9 plus 4, the total distance traveled from here to here on the number line. Okay, the number line's right there now. Happens to be 13 feet. 
and I counted it out for you. And that's what we have right there. Okay, let's go ahead and do this very last problem. When we finish this last problem, you should be able to do bug seven. This is very important. Um, the bugs are going to be super important when we go back the other way. So what we're going to do later on in calculus, so this is not going to be too soon, is we're going to give you the velocity function. And then we're going to say, what's the position? And we're going to have to go back there. And there's something called an anti-derivative, which kind of, I mean, the, the word kind of describes it. The derivative, it's the derivative gun that brings you right over here. If you zap this with an anti-derivative gun, it takes you back. But there is a bit of, there, there are some details that we'll have to talk about when we get to anti-derivatives. And then we'll be giving you graphs of this and we'll be asking the same question. Total distance traveled, displacement, average velocity, rest times, all that stuff. But we'll be looking at this graph. And my voice is starting to, to get like I've smoked a lot of packs of cigarettes. And it's because I'm looking out the window now. It's very smoky out there. And so you can smell the smoke in the structures, in the building that I'm sitting in and it's a good thing we we're going to wrap this up okay what is the bug's total distance traveled over the time interval one three okay so maybe you can pause the video and do that one on your own and um let's see the question is is four seconds within that time interval and the answer is four seconds which is rest time is not in the interval one to three. Now I wanted to do a problem like this because if I didn't, then when you did your homework, you'd be like, well, what are we supposed to do with that? Well, let's see. Total distance traveled on one to three happens to be displacement. Well, look, you don't have four in there, so you're just going to go displacement one to three. And don't forget to take the absolute value. So this is f of three minus f of one f of three, let's see, this is nine minus 24, this is 9 plus 19, which is 32. Wait a minute, what am I doing here? Let me just do this. So this is, I'm going to do f of 3 up here. So this is, I guess I have to write it out. I may have done this one already. 9 minus, it's not 24. What am I saying 24 for? Um, because it is 24. Okay, so sorry about that. I might say I'm a little confused. Okay. And I've got, okay, so I was having a hard time here with this. This is 28. I don't know why I was saying 30 something. Minus 24, which is 4. That does look familiar. Okay, f of 3 is 4. I'll look back on it. See that? So f of 3 is 4. f of 1 is 12. So we have the minus there. So 4 minus 12, which is negative 8. Absolute value of negative 8 is 8 feet. There, we're done with this. Let's take a look at the diagram here. So eight feet is the total distance traveled from one to three. So from time one, which you're right up here, time one to time three. Now, did we ever 
turn around on in this time interval from one to three? No, we didn't turn around is at four. So total distance traveled one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so we traveled eight in the negative direction on the number line. And um, we say positive eight because total distance traveled is always positive. Okay, so that concludes bug number seven. Do your homework. The next section is bug number eight.